Welcome to the lecture on the geometry of the computer screen. I hope you will enjoy the lecture, but before we start, a short advertisement. Incubator. Incubator are weekly meetings for our game students. Talks from games industry professionals, employability tips and talks, industry events, game jams, and many, many more. We had speakers from Antwerp, Swift, uh, Rockstar, Sony, Splash Damage, Unity, to mention just a few. More details can be found in Canvas. Okay, that's the end of the commercial section. Moving on to the lecture now. The agenda includes two topics. In 2D, we'll be talking about uh, coordinates and distances, and 3D covers uh, perspective projection. Computer screens are naturally 2D. And uh, speaking 2D, we have to consider a coordinate system like this one, well known since your primary school maths. But coordinate systems used in computer screens quite often are different. They are like this one. As you can see, the Y axis is upside down and the 0, 0, the origin of the system, is in the upper left corner. Why is that? This is a long-standing legacy dating back to the times when computing was dominated by text mode terminals. For example, this one here is MS-DOS 330, released in 1988. Much like in this modern Windows 10 command prompt, the screen was organized into lines and columns with the latter number naturally from the left to the right, but the lines running from the top of the screen to the bottom, following the way in which we read text. And this system of numbering survived in many modern 2D graphics systems, so the 0, 0 point will be here in top left corner, the X axis running this way, and the Y axis running here from the top to the bottom. The pixel with the maximum values of coordinates is here, and this is 1919 by 1079. This is because the resolution of this particular screen is 9020 by 1080. Please note that these values here are lower by one than the actual resolution. And this is because we count pixels from 0, 0. What you can see here is a modern screen with aspect ratio 9 by 16. Uh, so it is quite panoramic. But I also have another smaller screen with proportion 3 to 4 and lower resolution. Programming games, you have to remember that your games can be run in different resolution systems, which will be particularly important when you program mobile games that can be uh, run in the horizontal or vertical position of the phone. But some systems will rather follow the mathematical convention of the coordinate system, with the point zero zero down here and the y axis running from the bottom to the top. An example of such a system is the GFC, the library that we will be using throughout this module in your uh, practical programming activities. This is a windowed system and the zero, 00 coordinate is the lower left corner of the window, and the maximum coordinate is the upper right corner, and this uh, is 799 by 599, because the resolution of this window is 800 by 600. Once we have sorted the coordinates used in 2D computer graphics, we can use them to solve some numerical problems in 2D. For example, finding the distance between two points, P1 and P2. This distance is the length of this blue segment between them. 
First of all, let's sort out the coordinates. For the point P1, it is X1 and Y1. For the point P2, it's uh, X2, Y2. Now, if we build a right triangle like this and find a way to calculate the length of this side of the triangle and this side of the triangle, then using the Pythagoras theorem, we can find the length of the hypotenuse, which in this case is the distance between P1 and P2. So, how about this edge? This distance is the same as the distance between X1 and X2 on the X axis. So, this distance and how much it is. It is a difference between X1 and X2, but the X2 is bigger than X1, so the distance will be X2 minus X1. In this way, we have the length of the first edge of our right triangle. The second edge is here between Y1 and Y2. The distance between Y1 and Y2 must be Y2 minus 1, 1. And in this way, we have the second edge of our triangle, which makes it possible now to find the third edge, the hypotenuse, or the distance we are looking for. The distance calculated in this way is known in mathematics as Euclidean distance, for which we have a formula here. Please note the expressions x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1, denoting the two edges of the triangle shown here red, as well as the squares and the square root following the famous Pythagorean formula. It may come as a surprise, but this Euclidean distance may be the most often used, but by far not the only kind of a distance known in maths and computing. Examples of non-Euclidean distances include Manhattan and Chebyshev distance. Note that both display the same expressions as previously, so x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1. But they lack squares and uh, the square root. Instead of that, they have the absolute values, which are marked here with vertical lines. The absolute value or modulus is a non-negative value received by dropping the minus sign from a negative number or leaving a positive number intact. So, for example, absolute of minus 5 is 5, but also absolute of 5 is 5. This reflects a very fundamental feature of all types of distances in mathematics. The distance must never be negative. In case of the Euclidean distance, this feature was guaranteed by the squares, which are never negative, and in case of both Manhattan and Chebyshev distances, by the use of absolute values. Anyway, in case of uh, Manhattan, these two values denote the lengths of the two sides of the triangle, and they are added. This means that this is the combined length of the two sides of the triangle. In case of Chebyshev, it's the maximum, so only one side, in this case this one, the longer one, is the Chebyshev distance. But what is the real meaning of these two strange mathematical distances? Manhattan distance, also known as taxicab distance, may be explained with a metaphor. Imagine that you are in Manhattan, New York City, and you need to travel between two points uh, by a taxi. The streets in the city are laid out to form quite a regular square, or in the real city it is in fact a rectangular grid. So following the Euclidean distance would be pointless, because your taxi would have to take you across the blocks. Instead, you can take uh, quite a close route, shown here in blue, or perhaps another, the yellow one, 
or you can follow the main streets and go the red route. All these routes, if you look at them closely, are the same length, equal, keeping to this New York metaphor, to the main streets, or going back to maths, the two sides of a right triangle built on this diagram. This is what we call Manhattan distance. Now, the Trebuchet distance also has a second name, and this is the chessboard distance, because it can be defined as the minimum number of moves needed by a king to traverse between two positions. In chess, the king may move one position at a time, but in any possible direction, including diagonal. So, for example, here is the Trebuchet distance, and it is one, two, three, four, and five. The king may take also another route as well, for example, this one, but if only it doesn't do any unnecessary moves, the result will always be five. And this is because, once again, it is the length of the longer edge of the triangle. The king must travel at least this number of fields, whilst the other shorter side doesn't matter because it's simply completed by taking diagonal moves. Note that the Trebuchet distance is defined as the number of moves, not the total distance traveled this way. Let's take a practical example. We have these two points with displayed coordinates and we will calculate the distance between them. Our first step is to sort out the coordinates. So these are two and two, and these are six and five. The first edge is the distance between two and six. And this is, of course, six minus two, it's a four. And in this way, we have the first edge of our triangle. The second edge is the difference between five and two. So it is three and we have the second edge. Now we can apply the formula for the Euclidean distance and substituting our values to this formula, we get something like this, six minus two squared plus five minus to square, square root, it gives a square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared, it's a square root of 16 plus 9, square root of 25, it is 5. So our Euclidean distance is 5. How about Manhattan distance? We have again here x2 minus x1, so 4, and y2 minus y1, so 3. Uh, substitution, for plus three, it's uh, two edges of the triangle combined. The result is seven. And finally, Trebuchet distance, a very similar formula. Uh, we get substitution of the same numbers. So this is maximum between four and three. Of course, the greater value is four. The Trebuchet distance is four. A few important remarks. Manhattan distance is always longer or equal to the Euclidean distance. The Trebuchet distance is always shorter or equal to the Euclidean distance. So Trebuchet is the lower bound and Manhattan is the upper bound for the Euclidean distance. In other words, Euclidus will always be somewhere in between Trebuchet and Manhattan. This means that you can calculate these two distances, Trebuchet and Manhattan, and get reasonably good estimate for the Euclidean distance. In this case, you would get somewhere in between four and seven, and five really fits in this range. It may seem not very precise, but in many applications, particularly in artificial intelligence, and some algorithms of 3D graphics, 
the fact that you can estimate distance between two points without calculating a square root is just priceless. I will now use this example to introduce yet another fundamental concept of maths, a vector. I will need just to replace our blue line symbolizing the distance between the two points with an arrow just like this. And here it is. This is a vector with coordinates for three. Please note that these coordinates for three define this vector entirely. This vector is not attached to coordinates like 2, 2 or 6, 5. In fact, this vector can change uh, uh, location and it will still be the same vector because what's important for our vector are these two values 4 and 3 which are the lengths of the size of a triangle built on this vector. Mathematically, vectors have two other fundamental features, and this is uh, the magnitude, which is simply the length of our segment, the distance between uh, the beginning and the end. So the magnitude of our vector is five. And also vectors have a defined direction. Direction is a value of the angle here. So this is an internal angle in our right triangle, alpha, that can be found from the opposite and adjacent edges of our uh, triangle. So three quarters is a value of the tangent function of this angle alpha. So the angular value can be found by using the inverse function to the tangent function, or so-called arc tangent or ATAN. And the direction of our vector is 36.87 degrees. The concept of a vector is fundamental for maths, but it is even more fundamental for games programming. It will be a topic for the next big chapter in the game science module, but before that, our very next topic now is a quick introduction to 3D graphics, but this will be continued in a separate video material. For now, thank you for watching and see you soon.